Hi, this is Joy Biz Jet. This is my show, the Joy Biz Jet Show, on the Joy Biz Jet Channel. Um, I guess this is Saturday. I'm supposed to be doing punk rock slam poetry, but I really have nothing to offer you. So I'm gonna offer you a pre Mother's Day um, video. My mom is Gladys Maslack. She was a beautiful woman. So beautiful. I knew her from the time I was born to 1967, January 20th, when God took her away from me. Um, I don't have the bracelet on, but I got a bracelet that I had a um, a rosary, kind of like this from here, but it was all steel. Um, it was given to me by my cousin Diane last year. I think it was last year. I think it was last year. It might have been a year before. It must have been a year before. I'm sorry, 2015. She um, sent that with color pencils and adult coloring book, which I knew, never knew anything of. And I've used it a lot of times, and it's nice. It's a very nice thing to do to sit there and color. And I think how my cousin Diane gave up this bracelet of my mother's, thinking that I needed to come home with me, be back at home with me. Anyways, um, my mom, she was a beautiful woman. And I haven't seen her in a long, long time. Like 50 years? I think it's been like 50 years. 77, 87, 97. 2007, 2017. Yeah, I don't appear to be that old, do I? I try not to. I'm only 34. <laughs> but my mom, she loved me enough to quit her job at Burroughs. She was a key puncher, she manufacturer. She stayed home with me every day of her life until she got so sick, went to a hospital and took her last breath. Now at that time period, I probably wasn't doing good in school. I didn't do good in school the following year. I went to junior high. But um, my mom has always been in my heart. And um, I'm not proud of a lot of things I've done in my life, but I've done what I had to do to survive. And my mother was such a beautiful person. She helped me. She was in the middle of helping me transition to a point psychologically. And uh, the Lafayette Clinic was a strange place to do a lot of my metamorphosis. But um, it worked out for me real good. If I, every six months they would send the psychiatrist to Vietnam and pull on another psychiatrist. And basically I just kept repeating, repeating. I got frustrated. My father didn't really know. He thought I was there for anger management because I used to get teased a lot and bullied in school. And I used to not allow bullies to bully me. I would come back and zock them. Of course, too, I grew just like any other girl. I was the head taller than all the boys in school. That should tell you something about my chemistry buildup, my DNA, my genes. The boys are always like that to me, always like that. And I just, pow, clobber them, boom, through walls. Just for lowest things. They call me names. Anyways, I guess I was no femboy, as you may say. I, mean, I didn't act like it. 
I think I was a rough and tough kid in school. But I had to hold my own grounds. So that's why I was. But at home, I was me. Mama used to call me her bundle of joy. And she was actually my second mother. She was my adopted mother. She didn't get to adopt me until 1956, when I was one year old. It's when the adoption papers went through and the birth certificate became legal. Um, my biological mother, she was a beautiful person. She had to be to give me up. And she had to be wise and smart, intelligent. And that's the choice that my second daughter made when she gave up her child. Um, she would have wild sex and she got pregnant and she stayed away from us. She wanted to know if I would want to raise the kid, but there were so many stipulations, so many stipulations that it broke my heart and I had to say no. I, I, I would have loved to, to raise the child. But she's with a really good mother. Uh, every year the woman that has her uh, sends my daughter pictures, a Mother's Day gift, at Christmas time, a Christmas Day gift. So I guess in essence, in a way, it worked out pretty good. I still have five or six other children here in Fort Worth to be around and uh, I miss my daughter in Vegas I can't wait to go back her. She thinks I abandoned her. I was so sick. And I needed a place to stay. And I just lost the last place through a bad judgment call and crooked judges. Which seems to be the life here. You know, just everybody is corrupt these days. I don't understand it. Anyways, um, I had two judges, one for my name change, who really didn't want to give me my name change. He was too busy screwing seven mistresses. And then there was this judge who decided that, even since I was supposedly disabled because I'm a diabetic and um, was really having problems, that I didn't need the additional 60 days to move. So the landlord gave me hell. That's your landlord rep gave me hell. And we were moving. That wasn't good enough for him. Had to put it on the shelf. Then after we got everything in the, in the vehicles, in the trucks, and we load them up for the trip to California, the man says, well, if I would take care of myself, I wouldn't be so sick. Let me see. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I wasn't drinking and partying. I wasn't doing dope. I was at home, resting, eating, working a little bit, making enough money to survive, and then I got real sick, real super sick for a year. Anyways, the man is an asshole. He was an old man, he was just another asshole in my life, a bunch of assholes. Came back to my mom's. I had my biological birth mom, uh, must have been a really beautiful person for giving me up. I had my adopted mom, who is my mom. Then I had my stepmom, who's also my mom, was for four years, three years, three and a half years, something like that. My dad and her got married on leap year, 1969, uh, leap day, I should say. And uh, 
And January 20th, 1972, my mom called my dad home. So my stepmom took me out to get some flowers from my father's casket and then turned around and uh, decided that I needed to leave. She was going to leave me. So I didn't just lose my mom in 67 and my dad in 72. In 72, I lost my dad, my two stepbrothers, which I just call my brothers, and my stepsister, which is just my sister, and my stepmom, who I call my mom. And it wasn't for her. These are the achievements that I did sit with my mom. I excelled in school with her. I got my eye surgery thanks to her and a surgeon who went to her Presbyterian church. Two of the most beautiful people in the world. I stayed in touch with the doctor for years as a friend. Um, she also took me to a psychiatrist to make sure that I knew what I was doing. Unfortunately, the psychiatrist she took me to attempted to kill himself three times and finally succeeded. He had raced down uh, Jefferson Avenue, I guess. And, he ran, and the police would chase him and he ran out of gas. So he finally took a hose and did himself in in his car in the garage. Um, my mom just helped me excel in school. And um, she, when she left me, she didn't say the, she didn't say nothing to me until like nineteen eighty eight, maybe eighty six. I might have given her a letter, but in eighty eight we started talking again. That was like sixteen years later that she decided she would talk to me. She kept up with me. She spied on me through all my friends. She, uh, my friends or my brother's friends and she would spy on me invite them over to her house in Gross Point I li we lived in the east side of Detroit and uh, when I finally found out that my friends were were just talking to her and she was finding out everything she can about me but she would have nothing to do with me that really hurt it was okay. Um, I spent a couple of summers having surgeries. And I spent a couple of part of those summers visiting my uh, biological parents, parents who wanted to get to know me up in uh, New York. It was a trip, baby. It was a trip. Um, I think I did my first domination session back when I was about 15. And when I was 14, my parents thought I was at my grandparents' place in Queens. I ended up going to Manhattan. Went into a room with a guy and ended up being abducted almost, kind of bound and gagged. I got out. I was almost sold to a Chinaman. Slavery, you know? I really didn't think much about it. But now it's a big, 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 big thing. And this was just an isolated incident for me. I made sure I never happened again. Anyways, I went down the um, fire escape and went down to the local police station where one of my biological uncles was a police officer in Manhattan. And uh, they caught the guys. And I was sent back home to Michigan. And that was the last time my grandparents ever invited me to uh, New York. Not that I was bad. They just didn't want to be responsible in case I got murdered. And uh, I've been to Fort Lauderdale a couple of times to see my step-grandparents. 
they were they were an interesting couple. My uh, step grandma, grandmother, grandmother was a very snobby, up the up woman with very high caliber. So high caliber, I felt that I was sewer trash. And, uh, her husband, my grand, my step grandfather, he was a great guy. He just had hearing aids, and when he didn't want to hear her no more, he would tune her out. I got to know them, and I did like them. I really did like. I like. I like my step daddy, my step granddaddy. Me. Um, I had a grandfather once. He died in 1964, and he was a great guy. His name was John Cook. And he just always called him Grandpa Cook. And Grandpa was so cool. He always smoked his cigars and gave me Hershey bars and toys when he came over to the house. About once a week. Once a month, something like that. Hershey bars every week. Toys once a month. I miss my grandfather. My mom's dad. And I miss my mom. And I miss my stepmom, who passed away several years ago. I used to love talking to her. She, uh, she came from a well-to-do family. I came from an upper-middle-class family. She came from a well-to-do family. She was a school teacher. She taught the interesting kids, like the ones who had autism, and kids who had special invisible friends. She always had great stories when she would come home. And she would put us all at the kitchen table, make us all do our schoolwork. And she was so good. I got nothing bad to say about my stepmom. The only thing that's tragically sad is that she laid on the floor for hours before my sister's um, husband. So that'd be like my uh, brother-in-law something like that, uh, came to the house and found her on the floor and uh, took her to the hospital. And she later would eventually cease to exist. Sad. Anyways, those are my three mothers. And this has been my pre-Mother's Day kind of like talk just get it off my chest. Um, there is one more beautiful woman in my life. And that's my wife, Sharon. She is so beautiful. Without her, I probably would not have been alive. I probably would have just fallen off the face of the earth. Because I was on a collision course in 1982 when I met her. I was going, I was crashing. I already had one car wreck, two car wrecks. One that I wasn't driving and one that I was. And I was looking to escape this earth. I was looking to just not exist no more. And she gives me reasons to exist. She's beautiful, she's loving, she's caring, she's supporting. She loves me, even the way I am. And you know, that wasn't everybody back then. And she was loved me so much, she's made me dresses. And helped me do my hair. Not that I didn't know how to do my hair, but she would, she would just like care for me and help me brush it. All that good stuff. Since I've been doing, since I've been a little kid. Um, I'm really into corsets, so she likes to help me alter my corsets a little bit, make them more form-fitting, and dresses. Now my dresses, she takes in for me, and she's a good mother. She worked hard when we had kids. She allowed me six years to be a at-home mother, which was really great for me. But apparently, it didn't rub off on my daughter. So my daughter 
even though she can be at home at times. Doesn't really want to be around kids. And I love kids. I love these kids so much that I would go off to face the earth and do things for them. Anyways, maybe tomorrow I might have a Mother's Day video and uh, put the kids on. In the meantime, my mothers and my wife, you all are in my heart and I love you. Thank you all for watching this. And, uh, the next one won't be so depressing or sad. Bye.